I guess I don't even need to intro this cake. Guess what I'm making? Big thanks to Wowie for collaborating with me on this video. And thank you, Mia. You have been an amazing model. Much better than a watermelon. Leave the hashtag fingerlings below if one of these monkeys is on your holiday wish list. Which one of these do you want? Click the link below to meet them all. They're very happy about it. To make my Mia fingerling cake, I baked 10 pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter and I folded in some purple sprinkles before baking. I removed them all from their pans, leveled them, and cut the caramelization off the bottom. I'm making Mia, but way bigger. I'm making Mama Mia. Now that my cakes are all leveled, of course, Sir Squeeze is coming in to help me simple syrup them all. The next thing I wanna do is stack two separate cakes with chocolate ganache spread in between. One of my cakes was six inches in diameter and the other one was five inches in diameter. I like to use chocolate ganache when I'm really worried about structure. It's a lot stronger than buttercream. It's also delicious. Once they're stacked and filled, I chill the cakes to get ready to carve. I first begin carving my six inch round cake and I wanna recreate the lower half of Mia's body. Once I'm happy with her shape, I then take out my five inch round cake, place it on top. As I was carving the top part of Mia's body, I realized it was a little too narrow. So thankfully I had an extra six inch cake that I worked into the body and I think I'm gonna end up chopping off a bit of the five inch cake. I just wanna make sure that I get her just right. Mia. Can you look at camera? There you go. You know what though? I don't want her to be alone. Once I'm happy with the shape of Mia's body, I need to spread some ganache on that extra six inch layer that I added so that it will stick to the other layers. Now I need to secure this cake with dowels and boards. So it's actually two cakes that make up one body. Dowels and boards are important because when a cake gets too high, it can collapse on itself. And Mia, no offense, but you have a large head, which means this cake needs extra stability. I am going to place one whole dowel down through her body just to see, ow, I'm sorry, just to secure her to the board because her body kind of leans forward. Yeah, she's like that. Crumb coat and chill. Hey Mia, crumb coat and chill. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I need to ice Mia's body once again and chill it. You've been asking us for cake compilation videos and we have been doing that over on our new channel, How to Cake It Step by Step. We'll put a link right here and below. Please head over there and subscribe, watch the videos, share the videos, we really appreciate it. Now we're moving on to Rice Krispies. I'm basically making Mia's giant head and her two legs and two arms out of sculpting Rice Krispies. She's, she's just chilling, you know? Yeah. She's happy with this. Yeah, I said Rice Krispies. I make my sculpting Rice Krispies mixture, which basically leaves out the butter and the vanilla. For her head, I've decided to press it into some egg pans I have to recreate the oval shape. Now, eggs are not ovals, so good thing I have four of them. And what I did is press my mixture just into the bottom half of four different egg pans. Once the mixture has firmed up in the pans, I use my serrated knife to level them in the pan, just like I would do any sphere cake. Then I tap out the molded Rice Krispies and I use a serrated knife to cut them all to the same width. So I used my fabric measuring tape, making sure I was cutting them all at the exact same measurement. Now I need to glue two quarters together to get two halves of an oval, basically the front and the back of Mia's face. Get it? Yeah. And in order to glue them together, I am using some melted white compound chocolate. It's just nice and strong. 
And I'm just gonna set those aside because I need to make her arms and her legs. Here's where it gets tricky. I have to make her arms first. So what I do is I mold and sort of condense the Rice Krispie sculpting mixture into the shape of her arm. Her arm's like a little bit bent. I'm going to let this mixture set up for a bit and move on to making Nia's legs. See, she's always ready to grip. See these bent legs? That's muscle. Mia has some, look at her calves. Look at them. Once I'm happy with the shape. Oh, I'm boring you? Look at that. Look, she's asleep. I think she's making fun of your cake process, Yul. Really? <laughs> you know what? You were difficult. You were difficult. Now it's time to perfect the shape of Mia's arms and legs. So for this, I'm using a small serrated knife and I'm just carving the arms and legs the same way I would cake. You can carve sculpting Rice Krispies. It feels different than carving cake, but it's really great and the same rule applies. Carve little by little. You don't wanna cut away too much. All of the recipes I'm using in this cake, as well as some great tips for sculpting with Rice Krispies are in my cake book. When you purchase my cake book or a cake book bundle at howtocakeit.com, you get a free holiday ebook. It's happening this week only and it's our gift to you. We also have some e-gift cards which are great because they don't require shipping. So head over to howtocakeit.com. I'm gonna crumb coat all of my Rice Krispie pieces and chill them. Is that funny? She likes the crumb coating. Crumb coat! Once my crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice all of my pieces again and chill. It's time to move on to fondant, and the first part I want to cover is Mia's body. I roll my purple fondant into a sheet large enough to cover Mia's body, and then as fast as I can, there's some action in this episode, Jocelyn, I pick it up by the two top corners, and I whip it around her body like that. Whoa. It was that fast. It was I, that fast. I don't fast. think I've ever heard you talk about... Fondant whipping? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to fondant whipping. And then I cut away the excess from the bottom, I cut a clean seam down the back, and I just smooth the fondant over the top, which is sort of like her neck, and cut away excess. Guys, are you ready for a fondant whip? Whip it! Whip that fondant! Whip it! Whip it! Why are you We're just monkeying around, right guys? Who wants the fondant whip? They all went quiet at the same time. Now I'm moving on to covering the two halves of Mia's head. So I have my two oval Rice Krispie pieces. I'm just rolling on my purple fondant, draping it on top, and then cutting away the excess from the base. Now on one of the halves, I wanna leave a little excess fondant. So later on when I press them together, I have a bit of fondant to smooth over and meet the other half. It's time to cover the arms and the legs. So I just roll out my fondant, drape it over each part, and then I flip that part over onto a sponge, just so I don't flatten it on the table, and just sort of press the fondant over, cutting away the excess. You don't want it to be thick underneath, but you want to try and cover the majority of it. I need to make Mia's ears, which are very like the standout, you know, it's her standout feature. You're welcome. I have cut like a template of the shape of her ear out of a piece of cardboard. Making sure that it's not only the shape of her ears, but they sort of come to a point because that cardboard is gonna live between the two halves of her head. I used a flesh colored 50-50 for Mia's ears, colored with what food coloring, Jocelyn? Ivory. She's learning. 50-50 is 50% gum paste and 50% fondant, because I wanted it to be sturdier for everything that I'm making out of this color. The next thing I did was brushed some clear piping gel on the back part of the cardboard ears, and then rolled out some of my 50-50, laid it on top, flipped those pieces over, and trimmed away the excess. 
Now I need to cover the top and I roll the 50-50 a little bit thicker to cover the top of the ears. And then what I did was I used a small sphere pen to sort of texture the ear. I wanted it to be, like, is it concave? Like a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? And now I trim away the excess 50-50 and just sort of smooth it over the back. And then I place the ears aside to dry. So in order to create the board that Mia is gonna sit on, I used an old turntable I had and I stacked two cake boards on top and then I had Jeremy drill a hole through so that I could place the rolling pin down through the board and still leave the handle on. So now I need to move Mia's body over to this rolling pin fantastic board. I also thought it'd be really weird to recreate like a giant finger. I feel like after making a giant a leg, I'm like, I'm good on body parts for a little while. Now that Mia's body is in the correct place, I'm actually going to remove the rolling pin because I need to add her fleshy belly. So I rolled out some more of my flesh colored 50-50, really thin, and then I just used an oval template that I made, cut it out, brushed some clear piping gel on the back and laid her belly onto her belly. Now that her belly is in place, I'm going to place my rolling pin back on the board. I need to figure out how to secure her limbs to her body as well as the rolling pin. Once I figure out where I want them placed, I make a mark on my rolling pin on either side where I need Jeremy to drill. And then he trotted off and drilled four holes into my rolling pin. Did he trot off? He did, he really did trot it. He tried it. I also try to sort of curve the ends where it meets her body so it looks more natural. To secure the legs to the body and the rolling pin, I'm using a 1 8 of an inch thin wooden dowel and I'm gonna cut it to the appropriate lengths. And so there'll be a dowel at the back of the leg that goes through the leg and the body and then a dowel at the front of the leg that goes into the drilled rolling pin. I know that was on your bucket list, Jeremy. It went Drill before. into a rolling pin. Check. How to cake it, bringing you new opportunities and life experiences. It's time to move on to her arms, which is a little bit trickier because, well, they're not resting on a board like her legs are. But I use the same technique. I figure out where I'm going to place them and then I use the 1 8 of an inch dowels to secure them to her body and the rolling pin. As you guys know, these cakes take a long time. So that's why I'm wearing this. After this, we're getting cake tea because I deserve a slice of cake. This is the tea for the Cake Tea Club this month and right now we are having a sale on the Cake Tea Club membership over at howtocakeit.com. You get a new tea, sweatshirt, or apron every single month, plus a surprise gift and a note from me. To make Mia's hands and feet, I again am using my flesh colored 50-50 and I just mold them by hand. I mold the basic shape of her hands and then I use a knife to cut her fingers and separate them and my fingertips to just sort of round and shape each finger. Um, did I did I make the hands no did I make the hands apply them and then make the feet apply them? Yeah, yeah thank you Cody. You're very welcome. <laughs> wow <laughs> Jeremy just got he it. Wouldn't, really he done. wouldn't have remembered. I'm sorry I'm not following you. <laughs> I attached them to my cake with some toothpicks as dowels. So I inserted the toothpicks into the Rice Krispie arms and then piped on a little royal icing and attached the hands to the edge of the arm and the rolling pin. So they're like wrapped around. These are hand molded hands. <laughs> the next thing I do is mold the feet with my feet. No, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> But that could be a channel. <laughs> that would be a channel. So I molded her feet with my hands as well. And in the same manner that I molded her hands. And then I attached them to her body in the same way. It's time to recreate Mia's cute little face. And for this, I'm using my flesh-colored 50-50 once again. 
I roll it out and I made a template of the shape of her face, which is kind of like a heart. You'd like it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of heart shaped. I lay that onto my 50-50 and cut out that shape. I need to recreate her nose and mouth area. And for that area, I'm rolling out my 50-50 again, and I'm just using my rolling pin to roll down because I'm trying to create an oval that is like a dome. Mm. You understand? Yes. I use an oval cutter to cut out a perfect oval, and I'm not quite happy with the sides. They're still too straight, so again, I adjust it with my rolling pin, curving down, and using my cutter until I'm happy. I use more oval cutters, just making an indent of the outline of her nose and her smile. And then I used a pointed sculpting tool to create her nostrils. Hey, you just created nostrils recently. I feel like I've created a lot of nostrils. Last week you did nostrils. I mold nostrils with my nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> Mia's eyes are nice and deeply set into her face, which makes them perfect for slow blinks. So what I do is use a circle cutter to cut out her sockets. <laughs> I always feel weird when I have to use those words. Like she's so adorable and I'm like, I cut out her eye sockets, but that's what I did. I wanted to mold her eyeballs to also be domed shape. Now normally I use a spoon for this, but it was too deep. So what I used are these tiny little sphere pens I have. I just greased the inside with a bit of shortening and pressed in some black fondant. And then I used the straight end of a rolling pin to press it down. So it's still a dome, but not super high. I then placed those pans into the fridge to let that black fondant chill. I need to assemble Mia's head. Mia has to become one with herself now. So the first thing I need to do is lay the back half of her oval head down onto a sponge. Before I add Mia's ears to her head, I lay them down and lay one half of her head on top so I can make sure that I cut away enough 50-50 so her ears will fit perfectly alongside her head. Actually, the How to Cake It Hottie helped me out in this episode. Not only did he open the fridge for me several times, thank you Orhan, he also, when I glued one of Mia's ears on, her head was like imbalanced. So he lent his hand and held her ear in place while I glued on the other ear. See that? It's really a team effort for this cake. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mia, I told you I have a posse as well. Before I glue both halves of this head together, I just wanna make a pilot hole for the dowel that is extending out of Mia's body. So what I want to do is take my dowel and just sort of press out. It's like you're kind of shaving away some of the Rice Krispies. That way I'll just be able to slide her head right down. You want to make sure to cut away the lip of fondant that's over her ears, just so that we can see them clearly. Once the chocolate has set and the ears are in place, it's time to add the top half of Mia's head to her head. It's time for Mia's cute face to be added to her head. Right now she's just a head with ears, she has a face. I remove her face from the fridge and I brush the back with some clear piping gel. Then I place it on her head and just smooth it down because her head is rounded, so you wanna just gently press that 50-50 down. Mia also needs eyelids, so I rolled out a piece of my Flesh Colored 50-50, nice and thin, and then I glued two bands of it to the tops of each eyeball. And then I just used the sharp tip of my knife to cut away the excess. And once again, I used a circle cutter to perfect the shape. Finally, I brush some more piping gel into her empty sockets at the moment and add her eyeballs with her eyelids. I want to attach her nose and mouth. For this, I feel like I need a bit of support. So I insert some toothpicks into the Rice Krispie head and then brush on some piping gel and add the nose and mouth. Now I can add her head to her body and make her complete. So I'm just going to line up that pilot hole in the bottom of her head with the dowel sticking out from her body and slowly bring it down. Mia's head does have a seam but I wasn't quite happy with the seam on top of my head. So what I did was use my clay extruder to just extrude a little sort of semi-circle cord of the purple fondant and laid it over her seam, just to clean it up. You're welcome. 
Do you see how cute Mia's tail is? Of course I could not leave that out. So I used the remaining part of my purple fondant, rolled out a thick cord that's slightly rounded at the end, and then I curled her tail up over one leg and attached the back to the... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that's what I did. And now for her hair. For Mia's hair, I used white cotton candy. All I wanna say is thank goodness it's the holidays because I can't find it at any other time of year. Thank you again to Wow We for supporting and collaborating with me on this video. Remember, click the link below to meet all the fingerlings. Fingerling jazz hands. Click here to watch my ornament cakes step by step and click here to watch my holiday cakes compilation over on our new channel, How to Cake It Step by Step. Step by step, ooh baby. You don't know it? They're a bit young for that song. True.